I think you've got some explaining to do, Joe, because you told me this morning to come and pick you up at four o'clock. I didn't get to the right house this time. Um, but to uh, we're going on a day trip to Scarborough. You then directed me to drive to Preston, which last time I looked was on the other side of the country. Explain yourself. <laughs> Good morning, it is 6.33 on Thursday the 8th of July. Steve and I are in sunny Lancashire. We are in Preston and we're about to head east across the Pennines to Scarborough on the Scarborough Spa Express. Now Joe, can you explain why when we got on this rather splendid uh, old but really classy looking carriage that all the people in the carriage apart from a few brave people just dived off the train. Yeah. Well, what's going on? We are away from Preston, departed spot on time uh, at 7.13. Uh, we've come slightly south on the West Coast Main Line, crossed over and come round Farrington Curve and we're now heading towards Blackburn. So for our run across the Pennines, we are currently powered by a pair of Class 37 diesel locomotives, West Coast Railway Company, working in multiple, um, 37668 and 37685. Um, the train is formed of uh, Mark 1 coaching stock. So we are heading east across the Pennines now um, to York, where the Class 37s will be taken off and replaced with a steam locomotive. through Accrington um, on the East Lancashire line, um, very shortly going to leave the East Lancashire line and join the Calder Valley line and climb up to Copy Pit Summit. Um, not been on this line before so it's um, some, uh, some new territory for me. In keeping with tradition Steve has managed to photograph um, several hedges on the East Lancashire line. Um, we're now through Burnley Manchester Road, which means we're climbing towards Copy Pit. Look at that, Steve, that's a nice view. Means we are climbing towards Copy Pit Summit um, and we are on the Calder Valley line. So, Steve, um, how would you uh, rate the comfort on here compared to the Midland Pullman? Uh, well, it, I think it's a completely different experience. I mean, this is obviously. Um, it, it's like a faded glory, this kind of beautiful, but it's like a, I'm half expecting Hercule Poirot to walk through. It's that kind of training. Whereas the Midland Pullman was more plush but more clinical. It's completely different experience. Very beautiful. I think I think I would agree with that. And, and if Hercule Poirot does walk through, I think we should start to plan it. I will confess to the murder immediately and ruin the whole book. Uh, that is the sort of thing you do, to be fair. So splendid. We have now left. Um, sunny Lancashire and we're in West Yorkshire we're picking up passengers you are. Um, at Hebden Bridge and it looked like there was quite a few joining us Steve. There were. Um, you can't see it from the station but uh, coming into Hebden Bridge uh, it was what beautiful sunshine. It was. Sparking we have for the hedges. second second <laughs> second trip running um, we have um, managed to uh, pick the weather. Mm. Touch wood. Which there's lots of there's lots of wood here. To you touch. know what they say about the sun shining on the uh, righteous. Exactly. So why is it shining on us? Well, yeah. I'm just reading the uh, Times news, uh, Joe. You are. Yeah. And obviously, quite a bit of it is about the uh, the football. Yeah. Uh, which we'll just gloss over. It, it's coming um, home, apparently. But the key headline for me is Killer Lodger who fed pensioner to badgers could have been stopped. Now, they wouldn't do that now. Troll. So, what's that line there then, Joe? Have you got any idea? I think that's the line from Huddersfield coming round and joining right. this line. We're now in the Healy Mills area, site of the former famous marshalling yard. Um, so, Steve's so famous. No, 
never heard of it. Steve's never heard of it. Famous in railway circles, <laughs> Steve. Steve. Steve's looking at me, gone out. Uh, we've just passed the junction where the line goes off to Dewsbury and Batley and into Leeds that way. Um, our next calling point will be Wakefield Kirkgate. Uh, the place where they do research on uh, humans and uh, tests. Slim pickings here, That's then. right, yes. Did you get it? Well, I got that and some hedge tops. Well done. Well, we've now cleared the line between Castleford West Junction and Milford Junction, um, and we're just heading up to join the East Coast Main Line at Colton Junction. Um, an interesting fact: um, the former station at Milford Junction, which actually closed in 1904. Um, was the station that Carnforth station uh, stood in for um, in the film Brief Encounter. The line between Castleford West Junction and Milford Junction on my track atlas is red, which I assumed meant it was freight only. Um, could be wrong on that. And uh, my friend Pete assures me that there are the odd service trains um, that go down there. We're now in York Holgate Goods Loop. Um, here, the 237s are going to be taken off and replaced with a steam engine, which I do believe is uh, yeah. uh, an LMS Jubilee uh, Galatea, which is currently masquerading as um, a classmate, Alberta. No. So that will be uh, nice. To see. Otherwise known as 37424. We are now out of York Holgate sidings, just pulled into York Station. Some passengers might be leaving the train here. In fact, we were nearly leaving the train here. <laughs> Um, but that was for rowdy behaviour. Also, the fact that I accidentally um, made a small error uh, with the uh, the booking, but we've uh, sorted that now. Um, so uh, we now have an LMS Jubilee class uh, Galatea um, on the front of the train, or at least we hope we do. Um, and we've seen a few bits and pieces. Uh, Steve, have you enjoyed the sights of York Holgate Sidings Goods Loop? I, I, mate, I was particularly fascinated by uh, looking at the railway lines and the tops of various people's heads walking past. Yes, was it was great. quite interesting, wasn't yes. it? Yeah. Uh, but uh, there we are. Also, over in Holgate Sidings was 66303 that's just been named uh, Rail Riders Express. When, when booking the Scarborough Spar Express, you have the option of getting off in York instead. Um, and I, I'm surprised, actually, that quite a few people have actually gone off here. I thought most people would go through to uh, Scarborough. While sitting in the goods loop, we've also been sold a nice Scarborough Spar Express headboard badge, um, as uh, demonstrated by uh, Steve. Yeah, I'm very proud of this. Um, it's clearly worth a small fortune, well, 50p anyway. Yeah, um, yes. And uh, I'll be uh, proud to... Uh, give that to uh, Tiki when she gets back because she's going to be really pleased with it. I always take her something back and this is this is it. Yeah, it's, it's better than a fridge magnet. Yeah. Now, can you be honest, Joe? Uh, when you say that some people get off at York, right? we were nearly getting off at York, weren't we? Yes, um, but we won't talk about that. Oh, right. Yes. Well, okay, okay, we won't talk about that. I'll tell you what, I'll talk about yeah. it. Yes. Right? <laughs> Why did you ring me in complete panic yesterday? I, I, may, I may have noticed on our tickets that the destination was, uh, in fact, York. Mm. Uh, because the West Coast Railways website, unfortunately, the form defaults the destination to York, and I hadn't changed it. Uh, yeah. You can't get the staff, can you? No, you can't. And the, the other thing, of course, is it would have meant we were coming for the enjoyable steam ride to steam engine ride to Scarborough and not going on it. No, but you would have at least got it from, uh, you know, just over there <laughs> to here. Um, and uh, our 37s have just uh, appeared over in the sidings over there. So, uh, so yes, but nonetheless, we uh, called West Coast Rail and we got it sorted. Behind up filming us. So, Steve, um, 
you are impressed so far with the speed of our steam loco. I must admit the steam's uh, proving to completely outdo all this modern diesel and electric nonsense. Yes. And I say bring steam back. Lovely. Right. And obviously we're looking northwards, north York more beginning to rise in the distance. Have you? And then on uh, they've got a beauty, it's a very lush bale, very fertile, but obviously a lot of agriculture in the bale fed by the river. And then on the south side, you go down into the uh, into the walls. Very nice, lovely. But can you hear that steam train? It does sound great, doesn't it? This diesel, the electric. <laughs> We've made it to sunny Scarborough behind Galatea, which is actually disguised um, as Sierra Leone, not Alberta, as it was last time I had it on the Cumbrian Mountain Express. Um, and what's now going to happen is um, the steam engine is going to propel the stock out of the carriage side ends and have a spin on the turntable to take us home. Steve, have you enjoyed the journey so far? Well, I have. I've been, as I keep saying, particularly impressed with the steam section. I wish we had smelly vision because it's absolutely gorgeous. The smell of the smoke, the grease, the steam, it's absolutely fantastic. And it's just marvellous to see something that's got no electricity in it, uh, no computers, everything's mechanical, and it's a fire and a boiler. Pulling something like this yeah. is just absolutely amazing. Yeah, and I think... Uh, I think at the moment it's load 12, certainly load 11 with the support coach and as I understand it our average speed with the steam was the same as with the pair of 37s over the Pennines, so wonderful. Right, Fantastic. we are now going to go and explore Scarborough and hopefully find some funicular railways. Do you know? I think you're right. We'd start our trip, we thought we'd start our trip through Scarborough walking down the main road. Yeah, that was a good idea, wasn't it? Really picturesque and great. Um, and uh, at the, just over there, you can see Oliver's Mount, and it's got a uh, First World War um, centre tap up there, and what have you. You can drive up there. I thought you'd like to know that. You can actually see the sea, it's uh, over there between the land and the sky. We've left the station, had a walk up towards the North Bay, but we've swung round and uh, we're heading back, where are we heading back now to then Steve? Well, we're going to go to the uh, first cliff lift or funicular ever in the UK. Oh wonderful, right. okay. But before we get there, yep. we're walking past a lovely little hotel, which you can probably see there, called the Red Lee. And the reason I know it's lovely is I've stayed there about eight times in my yeah. life, mainly with the family. Last time it was just with me and my wife. Yeah. And it's a lovely little hotel, and we will be coming back here at some point, I'm sure. Brilliant stuff, and it's in a perfect position for Scarborough as well. Splendid. So a recommendation there for the Red Lee yeah. Hotel. Stood here. So you, you, you're getting to like Scarborough already, aren't you? I am. I must admit, Scarborough reminds me very much of. Um, Leamington Spa and I really like Leamington Spa yeah. so I'm going to call it Leamington on Sick. I have actually been here before with my nan and grandad uh, yeah. on a coach trip but years ago so it's, it's already lovely to be back. Well, One of the things that uh, Steve pointed out to me um, and it's nice of you, Steve, to do so. Well, I'm here uh, to please. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, was that uh, one thing that Scarborough's got that Leamington Spa doesn't have um, is... And I had to pan around very slowly, is that. Um, and I haven't been by the sea for ages, so it is... Oh, actually, no, that's a lie. I have been by the sea last week, in fact. Um, it is absolutely lovely to see the sea. Probably not, that's why she did it. Behind me is Scarborough's Grand Hotel, which you cannot miss at any point in the South Bay. 
The Grand Hotel at the time it was constructed was the largest brick built structure in Europe. Um, it also is in the shape of a V um, because the Victorians certainly loved Queen Victoria. Um, and it is also a rare example of a calendar building. Um, it has 12 floors, 52 chimneys, uh, and 365 rooms, which I will leave you go, to work go, out yourself. Go, go, as usual, you're making a mess of the facts again. I know you like to make it up, for goodness sake. Anybody knows that, that hotel only got 280 rooms. Ah, well, yes. So it was built with 365 rooms, but following refurbishment, it does now only have... That was me nearly getting my head taken off by a seagull. <laughs> following refurbishment, it does only now have 280 rooms. So as built, it was a calendar building, uh, which I think is really interesting. Steve, do you think that's really I interesting? I think it is really interesting. I wish they'd followed the plans, the original plans, when they refurbished it. Exactly. It sort of spoilt it a bit, didn't they? Exactly. Rambling on about the grand again. We are in what fact you mean the fact that it's a picture? Hotel. Well, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Um, I mean, personally, you, you're talking about the comparison between uh, you know, Scarborough and Leamington Spa, and I think you know uh, that, that's reasonable. I also think there's a very strong comparison between Scarborough and the Neaton. The only main differences are uh, is that the Neaton hasn't got any sea. Uh, it hasn't got the Grand Hotel, often hasn't got seagulls singing, hasn't got a uh, proper amusement arcades or a seafront or a harbour or a proper fish and chip shop like the sea. But otherwise, it's exactly the same. Now, um, I thought it was very nice of them. We have visited the Funicular Railways, we've travelled on the two serviceable ones and seen the non serviceable one, had a cup of tea in the former um, carriages of the um, St Nicholas Cliff Lift. Um, Steve is now taking me to find some chips, aren't you, Steve? I am indeed. Uh, and there's a chip shop a little further along, and I thought we could go and get some fish and chips and go and eat them on the part by the harbour. That sounds good to me. Um, and uh, it, the weather so far is absolutely beautiful. With the second trip running, uh, and we've fallen on our feet, I think, it Steve. It can't last. No, it can't. When we do one in October and it's belting it down with rain, we might feel differently. Um, I think one of the nicest things you can do is to have fish and chips by the sea. Yeah. And particularly fish and chips from Scarborough by the sea or Whitby or Penzance or somewhere like that. Yep. So why are you eating sausage curry and chips then? I, I know. Uh, and the other uh, fish and chips or sausage chips and curry and a batch in my case. Um, sitting by the harbour, which was lovely. Um, Steve was right, there is nothing better than this. Well, actually, there's many things better than this, but there's certainly nothing better food-wise than this. Um, but we are uh, now about to start walking back to the station. I've been over to the um, gift shop, bought a load of crap, um, and found the stupidest possible hat uh, that I could buy because uh, I am ginger um, and I'm starting to burn. In the back. What? My heart is broken. As you can see, we're standing outside the Shakespeare pub, which looked well boarded up and it's obviously closed down. But this, uh, I think even the blue flag has been taken down. This it was a flag here to say Steve Hay had his first point in the pub in this pub. Our back at Scarborough Station. We've been and got some supplies for the way home paid ridiculous amounts of money for some cans of beer um, and we're now uh, back on the station having a walk down and have a look at our locomotive and I believe Joe that uh, the bench we're walking along uh, at the moment is the longest railway station bench in the world that is correct Steve at uh, 465 feet I do believe right <laughs> um, unfortunately it is full of people at the moment well or fortunately actually it's nice <laughs> yeah. to see yeah. So what are you doing, Joe? You're going to sort of do a video walking along the whole length of the bench. Well, I think that would be sensible. Okay, well I'm finished. So uh, you do it, and I'll see you back here. Sounds right? good. Yeah. Oh, how did you do that? Well, what kept you? We have left uh, Scarborough. Dob on time at 16.41. Uh, we're now heading back to York. We're heading west and then back across the Pennines. 
Uh, so when we get to York, we'll go into Holgate sidings again. Galatea will be detached, and our two Class 37s will be reattached for the run. And we are running as 1Z27 Scarborough to Carnford. Have you had a nice day, I Steve? Had a lovely day, and I've been really pleased. You've been putting the uh, reports on uh, to Facebook and what have you. I've been sharing. I was particularly amused, though, with uh, the one you sent earlier. Uh, fabulous run from York Holgate to Scarborough, courtesy of Galatia. Now off to find some funicular railways and ships. Now, I must admit, I didn't raise an eyebrow, but I see others have raised similar eyebrows. Bob Hicks has written, you're going to need a bigger plate. Campbell McKay has written, is that a particular delicacy of Scarborough? You think that they might have said it's a fish with the chips. Absolutely ridiculous, yeah. isn't it? Um, and so on. Um, so I have had to reply saying they're tough northerners near Scarborough. We saw some people eating vanilla chips and curry sauce. Well, meanwhile we just stuck to fish and chips. And we did. And chips, uh, yeah. we, we did also see quite a few seagulls taking eating, people eating, eating other, other people's, people's chips. chips. Yes. Um, and, and a particular highlight of Steve's were the signs, uh, weren't they? Yes. Uh, instead of just saying, uh, don't feed the seagulls, uh, please, or something, just said, uh, no, please don't, no, don't feed the seagulls. Yeah. Yes, yeah. But excellent. So we, we managed to avoid seagull attacks. Only just. Uh, yeah, only just. We've just arrived into York Holgate sidings after dropping off and indeed picking up in York Station. Um, so we lose our steam locomotive here. Uh, in favour of the pair of 37s to take us back over the Pennines to Preston. Well, we're we are away from uh, Holgate, and in fact, we're already off the East Coast main line at Colton Junction. Uh, very importantly, we have got beer. Uh, we are currently stopped um, a little bit early. Um, in Healy Mills uh, Marshalling Yard, or I should say the former Healy Mills Marshalling Yard. Um, Healy Mills is actually quite famous. It was a marshalling yard opened in the 1960s to replace several smaller yards, um, complete with a loose shoot shunting hump, um, and it was uh, obviously um, part of British Rail's modernisation plan, so uh, freight trains could be shunted together and split, etc., um, on uh, various journeys. Uh, so the marshalling yard at Healy Mills was uh, slowly run down over the 1970s and 80s as the need for shunting was progressively reduced as trains tended to run um, as one piece from terminal to terminal um, and the yard continued to run down until 2012 when it was closed for good and I can honestly say it really is a shadow of its former self. Steve, you know how you said about Poirot arriving? Yes. We have, or we've just stopped just oh. outside yeah. of a tunnel. And he's come down to announce the 12 suspects for the murder he's investigating, and you and I are 10 of them. Oh, well, are, are there 12 people on it? <laughs> on it <now? laughs> we have got away from Hebden Bridge, dropped off some passengers, had a little brief stop. Um, and we are now um, not far away from Blackburn, um, the last stop for us before Preston, um, and we are uh, climbing up to Copy Pit Summit. A nice house up there. Quite evening view. If you get bored on the train, you can always look out the window.
arrived back at Preston after what I think was a very good run across the really Pennines on the way run. back. Yeah, yeah. Um, would you like a, a small fact about our journey? I admit a slight cheat of a fact, but I'll give it to you Go anyway. On, I'm ready for it. The average speed for our steam loco was at 35 miles an hour. Great stuff. Would you like to know what the average speed for our pair of 37s was? Oh, I'll take a guess at 12 miles an hour. Uh, well, quite that slow. It was 28 miles an hour. So the steam yeah. averaged well, faster uh, what, than uh, the pair of what, diesels. What have I said all along the way? I know. Journey. Yeah. Now, of course, it's slightly unfair because the 37s did spend quite a lot of time stationary not, on that run. But that, uh, yep, correct. It, it isn't. Um, so, Steve, have you enjoyed yourself? Uh, well, I mean, you know, getting to Preston a little bit early, but we got across onto the train, we went across the uh, Pennines, beautiful ride, very different from Lancashire to Yorkshire, through the Vale of Pickering and everything, into Scarborough, fabulous walk around Scarborough, and a lovely, beautiful train pictures we took, you know, doing the funiculars, down to the beach, having a cup of tea at the top there, uh, round having fish and chips by the harbour, a bit of a slog back up that hill, I've got to admit. Yes. Yeah. So overall, no. Yeah, yes, thank you, thank you. Yes, I think you did really I enjoy did. it, didn't you? Yes. yes. Uh, yeah. I, I think I would full, thoroughly recommend Scarborough Spar Express. It's running um, over the next few months. Um, it runs via two routes, so you've got the choice. Have a look on West Coast Railway's website. I think we both thoroughly recommend. Brilliant. And go yeah. first class. Um, I'm not sure it's worth going for the first class with all the trimmings, but definitely go first class. And on that note, thank you very much.